Next up on IJDM, we're going to take another look at the Mevo cameras and using them with a laptop via the NDI technology built into the camera. Another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. Okay, testing out the NDI function. First thing I did was went into the cameras using the app on my phone. They just show up on my phone. I connect to them and then switch on NDI. I put them in. Uh, 1280 by 720 mode just because my wireless here is kind of wonky with streaming multicams just because I have so many devices I need to set up a sub network for just streaming type things but let's check it into OBS which is a nice option because it is free and it's a little bit of a learning curve the one thing you got to do when you're using NDI on this software is actually go ahead and install the NDI plugin and make sure it matches up if you have the 64-bit version or the 32-bit version you want to make sure you get the the uh, NDI tool or plugin that uh, represents the version you're using and this is also good for Mac as well as PC um, this IBM is a E555 I think it's from 2015 maybe 2000 even 14 um, it's not very powerful not very powerful at all. It's got a terrible screen. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, but uh, yeah, and just to bring in the cameras, I'm just going to use the sources and then I can just go in and then do the NDI source and then NDI source or name it, whatever you want to name it right there. And then you just pull it up from your selection of different cameras. And there's my three Mevo cameras right there on the screen. I should do this as a screen capture. I didn't even think about that. Well, next time, next time, because we're just doing this as a quick take because it's one of those days and uh, so I can switch between different cameras and there is different options in OBS that you can add on to have like a multi-screen view if you're doing like a live production or whatever um, your cut and transitions are pretty much straightforward normally you'd put like in each scene you'd put one camera and then have the graphic you want and and so forth and have your scenes preset up but I kind of all did them in one scene just for the, the sake of this video and kind of speed things along a little bit and you can stream with this connecting it to different you know sources like YouTube or Twitch or, or uh, even uh, Restream so that's a nice option and of course you can uh, record as well if you want to do like a live to record live to tape they used to call it uh, type of situation you can do that as well but uh, yeah there you go it's it's uh, basically yeah there it is and I can switch back and forth between preview and then I can cut it into the other video and then switch to another camera if I want. I'm kind of doing this a wonky way, but you know, you get the, the general gist of it. I got one camera that's outside somewhere. Well, I did have a camera outside. Maybe, oh, there it is. <laughs> eh, it's hard to tell which camera is which. I just kind of placed them in different spots to make this a little more interesting. But that's OBS. You can't complain about it. It's free. You can find it anywhere on the internet or just look over uh, OBS, Open Broadcaster uh, Software System, something like that. Let's go to vMix. I've been asked some questions about NDI and vMix. Nice part about vMix is you do not have to install any extra NDI stuff on it as far as I know. And there's different packages depending on what you need that you can get for different overlay options and such. But I just want, I think I got the basic one for like 150 and it's good for so many versions of vMix. So it's, you know, it serves my purpose if I just need a an extra computer situation i can use this on an older slower computer although i've noticed with vmix it's a little slow and laggy sometimes that add an input you would just do kind of similar what you did with obs you just click the add input button go to your ndi sources slash desktop capture and you should start seeing the cameras populate into the actual thing without even having to do anything again make sure your ndi option is on the mevo camera so then i can hit ok and wait for it, wait for it, there it is. There's the outside cam streaming straight to this laptop. Okay, let's see if we can add the next camera. And I already pre-muted the camera because we obviously don't want any feedback going on. Okay, there's the next camera and then there's a wide view of the condos. And that's Beaky you're seeing kind of sitting on their fake eggs. There's real eggs in there, but we kind of, you know, we got so many diamond does, we kind of have to take care of the eggs if Anybody a bird owner knows what we mean by taking care of the eggs. Well, yeah, there you go. You can do that and then switch the camera over to the main screen. Yeah, there's a little bit of a lag there. I, it was just that first hit. That was kind of strange. Let's go back to this view. And then, and then if I want to fade, I can do a fade. 
I thought that it should be the space button, but I guess you got to set that up in shortcuts. You can set camera one, two, three, four, and so forth, and jump between the different cameras. But uh, the software is very neat and it's very robust. I find it's if you look at OBS, it's it's great. It's free. Uh, but as far as more of a professional thing, this one definitely is very nice. And I mean, personally, of uh, the different ones I use, I love, I, I absolutely love the, the live stream um, uh, studio or now called Vimeo Studio the best just because it's, it's got so many feature rich functions and really meant for that live environment. So how do we add the NDI over in the other program? Well, I wasn't going to do this for this video, but we're going to do it anyways. So what we're going to do is the same type of thing we usually do on this channel because we don't totally go scripted. See, it's even having trouble shutting down and I swear I hit. Okay, there it goes. Just a little slow. It's an old computer. But this one, everyone knows this one is a little bit quicker. And yeah, we got, uh, what is that? Oh, let's see. There we go. A little better. My house has a lot of light, so I usually do these at night when the birds are sleeping, but lately it's just not been happening. Okay, we have the software up. It popped up on the other screen, so that was a quick edit there. So on this, we'll go to Add Input, and then we'll just go to Remote, and there's my NDI sources listed in. If I, was, if I had the NDI off, they would be showing up uh, the same type of way, just without the NDI protocol loaded. And it's basically a protocol. It's kind of standardized video streaming and, and so forth. And obviously the video is going to look a little bit better on this screen just because it's a better screen. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and add the next camera and wait for it. And then we'll go ahead and add the last camera. And then we can add other video sources too. I don't know if there's anything else showing up on my remote channel right now, like my weather channel. Uh, sometimes I have the NDI protocol streaming. And there is software you can download too, or if you've got a computer and you want to use the a PowerPoint presentation from it, that you can load it right into this as well. Um, there's different, there's a hundred different options you can really do with this software. That's it, it makes it a really neat piece of software. So let's go to, okay, so that's camera one. And then that's camera two, I'm bringing it in. And that's camera three. And then if we want to do fades, we can do fades by hitting the space bar. Yeah, I'm just kind of jumping around right now. And there we go. Yeah, you can see, uh, you can see my bird uh, 40 hanging out there in his condo, just kind of chilling in the afternoon. And the noisy ones you're hearing are the ones up here probably little diamond doves so they all had their sunlight and bath time yesterday outside of course they're in cages so they don't take off on us but anyhow there there you go that's it's simple as that using the ndi i mean it's it's just like i don't even know what the comparison be it's just like adding a camera or a source into any of these pieces of software like you would normally add like a local camera it's just you're using remote and then with the other programs it gives you a list option which it's this is broken down into different sections so to speak where the other one is not so if i was to go ahead and run the ndi protocol over on this laptop or the live stream desktop software but i already got the ndi desktop capture uh set up we're just going to use let's go try that one and i think it's running so will it show up yeah so there's one of the laptop so if i had a powerpoint or whatever on my ibm um then i could obviously there it is i could have it input to this if i wanted to use a separate laptop just for powerpoints or some type of online you know live thing like in monitors or whatever well, it seems to be flaking in and out but uh like i said it's a little computer maybe having some issues trying to run the ndi or it could be with my wireless network because i'm sending so much information over it right now on one channel but there it is. There's basically the software in a nutshell using the NDI protocol with the Mevo cams. If you have other NDI cams, of course, you can bring them into any of these pieces of software. It's just the, the Mevos are probably one of the cheaper solutions for if you want a camera that you can just hook up a wireless system, not run wires everywhere, or maybe you're not able to run wires. It's a good option to have. I have also been asked, is it solid? Well, if you have a good wireless spot and connection with no interference, then it's 99% perfectly fine. Sometimes you'll get an occasional little teeny glitch, but I mean, I haven't really experienced that as they've been improving the software and working out firmware bugs. It just seems like it's been getting better and better. 
from day one, I'd say it was probably about 90%. Now I'm gonna say it's getting closer. I say 99, but maybe more like 96, 97, because there is still, still, still some fussiness to it and the, you know, the computer you're using and what the environment around you uh, is as far as wireless signals go. That is it for this IJDM. Be sure to subscribe. We need more subscribers. Tell your friends about the channel. We got lots of interesting stuff. Retro tech, we got more modern stuff like this. Anything you really want to choose from, we've pretty much covered it in different uh, eras and decades of electronics. We'll have some more stuff coming up on the uh, Anycast. Actually, we're going to be doing another video on that very soon. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and thanks for watching.